wall for miles on this bit of danger. I swallowed down a thousand years of anger. Doom, 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 doom. The weight of the world is falling on my shoulders. A place where no one follows me, I walk alone. Yeah. What's poppin' everybody? This is your boy Destination Gaming. And I'm back at it again with another video. Now, of course, I feel in a happy mood because, like, you know, I'm singing Batista's theme song and whatnot. But I'm happy because on the 15th of April, or the 13th of April, but whichever one of those two, I forgot which one. WWE just released nine superstars. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I told y'all for the get-go, nothing that they do surprises me. But I'm not going to lie to you guys. This one right here definitely did surprise me. Now, if you don't know who are the superstars that got released, I got the picture right here. Here you go. See? There's the picture. Now, as you clearly see in this, in this picture, these are all the people that have been released from the company. Samoa Joe was definitely one of the biggest names that have been released from the company. Along with many other superstars, such as, of course, we already know who. Chelsea Green, Mickey James, um, Wesley Blake, um, uh, Mojo Riley, I said Chelsea Green, I said Mickey James, um, I said the Iconics, uh, Kalisto, Tucker, they got a lot of names on here, man. I'm not going to lie to you. Got a lot of names on here that majority of these people, except for Samora Joe, was dead weight. I'm not going to lie to you, man. All of these people have been dead weight. From Mickey James to the Iconics to Chelsea Green to Wesley Blade to Tucker to Kalisto and Bo Dallas. I forgot about him. Bo Dallas. Everybody else on this list has been an absolute failure, except for Samoa Joe. Every time Samoa Joe touches a microphone, it's a wrap. His matches were, were really good. His promo work has been the best. Outside of a John Cena doing his promos, Samoa Joe is definitely the best superstar to cut promos. Because he gives you that realistic. He gives us something that a lot of superstars don't really give us. And honestly, I feel bad. I really do. Because it's absolutely ridiculous how the company don't know how to use these people. First off, I'm going to go down the list here. And I'm going to start off with the biggest one. Samoa Joe. He was definitely the biggest surprise to me. Now, I get it. I understand that he hasn't really been on te television because he's been mostly injured majority of the time. But when he's healthy and 100%, trust me, he can perform. He can work his ass off. No doubt about that. No question of that in my mind. But when you sit there and don't do nothing for this man, this man hadn't even won a WWE championship. But you sit there and give this man a U.S. championship that he hadn't held for long enough. And then when you do get him, get him on television, you put him on commentary. Now, don't get me wrong, putting Samoa Joe on commentary is a pretty cool idea, especially that Samoa Joe was injured. But everybody thought that right after WrestleMania was over, everybody thought that Samoa Joe was going to eventually come back to the WWE and actually start performing. So he, he eventually get at least a shot at the WWE Championship. Because to be honest with you guys, I would love to see a Samoa Joe versus Bobby Lashley at SummerSlam. That was honestly one of my predictions. But this is, but this is you know, come on now. This is typical WWE, man. Nothing that they do surprises me. Where does Samoa Joe go after this? I want him in AEW. Now, I know not everybody can go to AEW. I understand that. I get it. I truly understand. But at the same time, if you're looking for somebody that can give you more freedom than what AEW already does, if you want perfection out of somebody, you go after this man. Tony Khan? I don't know if you've seen my videos or not, but if you look at them, I highly recommend you go ahead and get them. Pay whatever money you get. 
and have him become the next guy to win the AEW World Championship. I think that would be a beautiful thing. Let's be real here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's be real. The next person is Mickey James. Mm, 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 Mickey James. Listen, man. <laughs> Just listen, okay? I don't know about you guys, man. But I love me some Mickey James. I really do. I honestly think that she could have at least have at least one more title run at some point in time in WWE. I think I, I mean I honestly do think so. And even though yeah, she definitely required her role as commentaries every now and then, and according to WWE, it didn't really like you know according to some people, it didn't really work. And to be honest with you guys, I honestly think she could be good as commentary as well. But then I heard a um, rumor of why she got fired. Because she wanted to wrestle. But WWE does, didn't want her to do it. They didn't want her to wrestle because of her age. Up in the age. Because she was up in her 40s. She was up in her 40s and everybody thought that, oh yeah, just because you're in your 40s, don't mean you need to wrestle. So you don't need to wrestle. We're going to have to let you go. Now, I can't clarify or confirm that this was the that this was the, uh, what actually happened. This is one of the rumors that I've heard. So don't quote me on this. But let me get this straight. If this is true, let me get this straight. You have a 41-year-old woman, a former Divas champion, and a former women's champion, a Hall of Famer in Mickey James that actually wants to wrestle up in age at the age of 41 and she can actually still wrestle y'all. So you mean to tell me you don't want her to wrestle because she's up in the age and you basically call her old. You don't want her to wrestle, but you want a 56-year-old or 50-something-year-old man in Goldberg, a.k.a. Goldberg, to come back, do spears and jackhammers, and win a championship that he doesn't deserve? Somebody explain the genjutsu. Somebody explain this problem, this situation, this bull jive that I'm hearing so far. Mickey James... Should have at least got a, a, a run. At least a championship run. Yeah, she faced off against Oscar for the women's championship. Okay, yeah, cool. Cool. I get it. I understand it. There's no doubt about it. Mickey James is no, like, you know, it's not a bad superstar. She can wrestle. But, to be honest with you guys, on some real talk, folks... I honestly wish that she would have that she would have like gotten at least one more run. I know I keep saying it over and over again, but I honestly wish she would did. But now, but this is okay though, because this gives her an opportunity to go do something else. Whether she come a commentary for Ring of Honor or commentary for Impact. Speaking of Impact, I think that's where she should go next. Oh yeah, you know Jazz was there. Jazz was over there on Impact Wrestling. I think she. I think she's like going to fully retire after her run in Impact Wrestling. She gonna, I think she's going to retire, I think. And if so, hey, she deserves one hell of a run. She earned it. She's a Hall of Famer. No doubt about it. Now, I think Mickie James, I think she should be the next person to go on on Impact Wrestling. To be, to be honest with you guys, in my opinion. Because... I think if you put Mickey James in the ring, she can wrestle. She can wrestle with the best of them and just give her some time in the ring and she will do it. But that's just me. That's just me. Let me go over to the next person. I'm just going to start with the Iconics. I did, I did not like the Iconics whatsoever. I don't care who y'all are. I don't care what y'all say. I did not like the Iconics. I couldn't stand Billy Kay in the, on television because she couldn't wrestle worth a damn. She can't do anything in the ring. None of the stuff she was doing was, was either a close-up entertaining 
like nobody cares about the icons to be honest with you guys. But if I had to choose between one of them, I'm picking Billy uh, Peyton Royce. I would never pick Billy Kay. I would definitely pick Peyton Royce. I do think Peyton Royce can wrestle. I think she can wrestle. She just needs a little bit more training and a little bit more time going on in the ring. In my opinion. Now, where do they go after this? Hopefully, they don't wrestle. Hopefully, they don't wrestle. But if Peyton Royce does come back and try to try to wrestle a little bit, at least train to wrestle. Don't just sit there and be in the ring and you don't know how to do an arm bar. Billy Kay. Because we all know you can't do it. I'm just speaking it from, from facts. Where the Iconics go? Hopefully that they don't wrestle no more. They can continue on doing what they're doing on the YouTube channel or like like some type of freaking um, modeling thing. Whatever whatever they do. I don't care what it is. Whatever they do, they, they just don't do it anywhere around the wrestling ring. But if they do come back to the wrestling ring, they need full-on training. Full training. I don't care what they what, what y'all say. It's full-on training. Here's another person who I think that should go to Impact Wrestling. Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green should be a really good star on Impact Wrestling. And I'm saying this because her husband is over on, on, on Impact Wrestling. I believe it could work. Think about it. Mike and, and Maria Canales over there on Ring of Honor. So why not do it for, um, you know, for Chelsea Green? I think, in my opinion, Chelsea Green would be a great superstar, uh, women's superstar. I think she she could win the women's championship over there on Impact Wrestling. I think she could win the Knockouts Championship because she deserve it. Just give her a chance in the ring. Trust me, she'll get it done. She'll get it done. No doubt about it. I definitely believe in my heart of heart that Chelsea Green could be the next Knockouts Champion. That's just me. Wesley Blake, I'm not really surprised about this one because he was a dead weight too. At, right after they split, up, uh, right after they split, up, split up the Forgotten Sons, and their name was the perfect name for it, the Forgotten Sons, because everybody then forgot about them, son. <laughs> for real, no joke. But as far as Wesley Blake is concerned, I don't know where he goes after this. Hopefully, somewhere better, somewhere that he can actually get his talents in. Someone that can actually understand, you know, someone that can appreciate his work in the ring. Because there's always that one person out of the entire group, whether it's a tag team or a faction, that can definitely wrestle better than anybody on there. So if Wesley Blake can go somewhere, I think I do think he should go to either NWA or Ring of Honor or whatever he goes. A guy like him definitely deserves to be in the, in the ring at some point in time. Tucker. <laughs> Listen, I did not like it when they split up the heavy machinery. Now they got Otis in a different tag team with Alpha Academy with Chad Gable. I don't understand the logic and the exp explanation of this whole entire situation. You split them up for what? For what? To be honest with you guys, when they was doing the draft, I was much rather prefer Otis and Tucker heavy machinery to be drafted on Raw than having one person draft to the other brand while the other brand stays here. That don't make no sense. It's a waste of time. There's no logic in that, in that whole situation. So, I mean, I mean, for what? I mean, come on, man. You ruined Tucker. You ruined Tucker and Otis. Now Otis over here on SmackDown basically looking like the second coming of Mark Henry. I mean, this is honestly ridiculous. All difference is between Otis and Mark Henry is that Mark Henry never gone to the top rope and tried to fly. But under that man, Tucker, he just need to get his story across, give his story, give his explanation and stuff. And trust me, Tucker will be all right. He'll be all right. Where does he go? I don't know. Somewhere better. Somewhere where somebody, where a wrestling company can actually treat him better. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Kalisto, Lucha, Lucha, Lucha. Well, well ever since you've been on SmackDown, you've been loser, loser, loser. Listen, man. Ever since they split up Lucha, uh, Lucha House Party, and even before they split up Lucha, Lucha House Party, Kalisto hasn't really done nothing since he 
been on the group. Kalisto hasn't done nothing. They ain't put this man on TV to have him be in a match or nothing. They just simply just put him on TV just to say something, be Sasha Banks' friend, which of course they are friends in real life. But other than that, that's it. That's it. Like, I just don't understand. I just don't understand this WWE. I don't understand this company. Kalisto could have been at least a mid-card championship. You already had him as a cruiserweight champion before, but you can't have this man to win at least, you know, the Intercontinental Championship or at least a a shot at it? I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Mojo Rowley. Listen, man. Listen. I was never a fan of Mojo Rowley after the Hype Bros was split up. Now, if you don't, y'all don't know who the Hype Bros were. That was Zack Ryder and Mojo Rowley. And they made a t- tag team in form of Hype Bros. And they were a good tag team for a while until the uh, WWE, for some strange reason, split up Mojo Riley and um, Zack Ryder. Mojo Riley had a pretty good run. He won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal thanks to Rob Gronkowski. Let's just call it like we see it. Thanks to Rob Gronkowski, Mojo Riley had won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. So he had a pretty decent run. Then Zack Ryder comes back from an injury. Now he's back on the tag team and he didn't want to do tag team anymore. He wanted to do his own thing and his own pattern. They did not know what to put this man on. They did not know what to do with this man. One minute he was a heel, next minute he's a baby face. I don't don't know which one. And to be honest with you guys, let me take that back. He was honestly, there was never a baby face. He turned heel majority of the time and we ain't never seen him turn baby face for quite a while. And if he does turn baby face, if he did turn babyface, that was only because Rob Gronkowski was on SmackDown and he was sitting there trying to hype him up right next to Michael Cole. That was the only thing that this man has done. Mojo Roddy hadn't even sniffed a championship. The only thing he has been sniffing about was him and Zack Ryder winning the SmackDown Tag Team Championships back in two, three years ago. This is the only opportunity that this man had had. That's it. What a disgrace, man. I'm not talking about Mojo Riley. I'm talking about this damn company. Like, it really pisses me off how Mojo Riley doesn't even get at least a, 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 a shot or anything. They had this man in the background in catering. That's why I don't, I don't get it. Where does Mojo Riley go? I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully somewhere better. Hopefully it's somewhere where you can actually see his true potential. And with Matt Cardona being away from Impact Wrestling, like going to Impact Wrestling, you never know. He could land over there and might join up with him and Matt. I don't know. Maybe start a feud with them. I don't know. Well, let me take that back. Zack Ryder, I mean, yeah, Zack Ryder, a.k.a. Matt Cardona, already going through a feud with Brian Mayer, a.k.a. Kurt Hawkins, over there on Impact Wrestling. So, it's a whole different ball game from there. Mojo Riley, I don't know where he goes after this. Hopefully somewhere better, just like the others. Bo Dallas. <laughs> Remember how he was when he debuted? He debuted on the main roster. He said, all you got to do is Bo leave. <laughs> well, be Bo leave that your ass should have stayed at home. You have been treated like garbage, bro. How is that? You have this man won the NXT championship against Big E, I think, on NXT. You put him on the main roster to do absolutely nothing. You put you paired him up with Kurt Hawkins, and y'all called yourself the social outcast, along with them two, and I think Heath Slater was a part of that group too. And then and then what else? What else happens? Then you paired him up with, with, of course, you still paired him up with him and Kurt Hawkins. And then you paired him up with The Miz. And then after that, y'all call yourself the B team. And then y'all ain't done nothing since then. Kurt Hawkins, he was let go. After Kurt Hawkins was let go, where was Bo Dallas at? And to be honest with you guys, I thought Bo Dallas was already a part of WWE um, firing him. Last year, 
I thought he was one of those guys. And to be honest with you guys, I am so glad that he is fired. Because he needs to go somewhere else. Somewhere that he gives him, gives him a little bit more freedom. Somebody got to say it, man. Bo Dallas was treated like pure garbage. Pure, pure garbage. But out of all these people that's on these lists, why didn't WWE add a little bit more people on there? Why didn't they add Ricochet, bro? Why didn't you add Ali, bro? Why didn't you add Jinder Mahal? Nicki Minaj? I mean, not... not <laughs> I said Nicki Minaj out there. <laughs> I am so, I, I literally got so hyped up for this thing. It's just like I just couldn't believe it. Okay, let me take that back. Why didn't you why didn't you fire Nikki Cross? Is what I'm trying to say. I was about to say Nicki Minaj, man. Mm mm mm. Why is she on my mind? I don't know why. But yeah, what about Ricochet? Ali, Judah Mahal, Nikki Cross, Jackson Riker. Yeah, how come you didn't fire him? Velveteen Dream, how come you ain't fire him? I'm still waiting on that. Keith Lee, I'm surprised he's still, he's still around. Alistair Black, I'm definitely surprised that he's around. Especially knowing that his wife is no longer in WWE no more. Buddy Murphy, what about him? You got all these guys on this um, list of people that, you, that, that WWE has released. How come these guys that I just mentioned is now on the list? Ricochet, Ali, Jackson Riker, Nikki Cross. Why isn't these people on the list? That is what I don't understand. I don't understand it. And then this is another thing I don't understand. I found out the reason why, like one of the reasons why that they, all of them got released. Every last one of them. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com reported this, folks. I'm reading this on my phone. He said, and I quote, I'm told John Laurinaitis has been making the calls to talent and citing budget cuts as the reason for the WWE releases. I'm going I'm to I'm go over that one more time for you guys, okay? I'm told John Laurinaitis has been making the calls to talent and citing budget cuts as the reason for WWE releases. You have got to be kidding me. You cannot be serious right now. Like y'all, y'all can't be serious. Y'all can't be serious. There's no way that this happened. You mean to tell me, you mean to tell me citing budget cuts is the reason why that you have released all these uh, stars, all these superstars, when you just got a billion dollars from Peacock? Who do you think you're fooling, man? I say no, who do? Who do you think you're fooling? Who you fooling, man? You just sold your own network. Sold it over to Peacock for a billion dollars. And by the way, I'm going to do a separate video on that too because I don't think they should have they done a great idea to move it to Peacock. Peacock for a billion dollars. For a million dollars. Dollars, bro. I don't think they should have done that, but I'm gonna talk about that in, in, in another video. This is not the, the topic of the conversation. It's not the topic of the conversation, but I'm still trying to figure out how the hell do you get budget cuts as the reason why you release these people when you just got over a billion dollars for selling your own network to Peacock. I just don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't get it. But at the same time, I found, I honestly think these releases are actually really good. They are actually really, really good. To be honest with you guys. They are. 
I find these releases as a good thing. Because everybody except for Samoa Joe that is on this list has been dead weight. They have not been useful. They have not been booked right. They have not been built for anything. None of them. None of them. None of these guys has been booked to perfection. None of them. Not even the useless Iconics. Chelsea Green, she got injury prone. Samoa Joe, he was injury prone. But he was not dead weight. He was a star. Even without a championship, he was still a star. I don't get it, folks. I, I really don't get it. But at the same time, I'm glad that these people are released so they can go on and do what they want to do. So don't feel bad about this release. They are free. Anytime you are free from this god awful co company that is WWE, that's freedom. Absolute freedom. Period. I don't give a damn who you are. This company sucks ass. Period. I don't care who you are. They are god awful and they are a bunch of trash. Trash! That's going to be the end of this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you did, please give this video a big fat thumbs up. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Tap on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. This is your boy, Des Destination Gaming. Saying thank you guys so much for watching. Injustice is coming very soon. Lego Marvel Superheroes is coming up very soon next. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, turn on that bell. This is your boy, Desmond D, a.k.a. Destination Gaming. Saying thank you guys so much for watching. And peace!